Mick is a profound driver of human cancer. It's deregulated in over 50% of human cancers. And I figured, well, now I'm entering this cancer field, go big or go home, let's work on something very important. If we can understand it, how does it drive cancer, maybe then we can understand how to stop it. I'm uh, Dr. Linda Penn. I'm a senior scientist at Princess Margaret Cancer Center. I'm also director of the Office of Research Trainees at the University Health Network. I started, studied MEC when I was at the uh, ICRAC. Most of my colleagues at the time thought I was crazy because MIC was known as sort of an enigmatic oncogene. It was known that it was a potent driver of cancer, but the mechanism completely unknown. And so my, my friends and colleagues would say to me, <laughs> what makes you think you can <laughs> figure this out when nobody else can? But I think that's another important aspect. Everybody is, is programmed to think differently. And I think that's what I love about research in that I'm going to look at my problem differently than anybody else and tackle it in my own way. And I think it's you know, everybody doing that that then you know, we learn from each other and move the field forward. We now recognize that MIC is actually binding and regulating 10 to 15% of all the genes in the genome. It can regulate so many different processes, increased proliferation, decreased cell death, uh, ability to metastasize, ensure that you've got a blood supply. So it's not just regulating a handful of genes a lot, it's regulating a lot of different genes a little. But that is just enough to drive the cancer. MIC doesn't have a lot of internal structure. It's more like a spaghetti. It's very malleable. It doesn't have a pocket where a drug can actually bind. The breakthrough is really working with Dr. Brian Rout here at Princess Margaret to identify hundreds of proteins to which MIC interacted, either directly or indirectly, and important for MIC to be able to be that potent oncogene. And so now we're developing inhibitors to those MIC protein interactions. The research thrives on everybody conducting the research in their own way. And so that entrepreneurial, innovative, creative kind of uh, approach is actually encouraged. The sky's the limit. You know, every, it's lots of different opportunities in different ways. Every now and then a, a trainee would come and ask me what they should do in terms of their scientific career. That I thought, well, there seems to be a need here to actually open up this conversation and provide maybe some guidance or some support. What the Office of Research Trainees provides is a parallel stream. So they can start to think about themselves in the long run. When they come to the end of their research um, training period, they're in a very strong position to then be competitive for whatever they might want to do. And so conduct their, their uh, scientific career according to what really um, drives them and, and interests them.